Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the greatest time of the day. From the center of the universe, New York City, it's the main event you've been waiting for. It's time to go in the cage with Cyclone! back your messiah has come home healthy i think um so let's just get into it shall we i interview bobby campbell from jackhammer promotions two weeks ago right here get home and in fairness going into the show i wasn't exactly a hundred percent to quote Kamara Usman, I was playing at about 30%. I get home and I pull a Rowdy Rowdy Piper, a Ric Flair, and I face plant right into bed. I wake up middle of the day on Tuesday, fever and chills and and stuff shooting out of me every way possible. Oh, what a mess. Things got were getting worse. Because as we can see, this Greek god of a body before all of you doesn't always take care of himself. Is what it is, to quote Max Holloway. So, one thing leads to another. I'm starting to get better. I'm... I'm I'm fighting it. I'm getting stronger like Rocky. And in my office, my desk is next to an old school radiator. Now, in the summer, I like to pile stuff on top of the radiator so I can just lean on it like this while I'm online. In the winter, with the heat coming up, I like to pile stuff on top because I like warm clothing. I know, OCD, I'm a mental case. And somehow, while I was getting better, I kind of pushed my clothes off the radiator, fell asleep with my arm on the radiator, and woke up with my arm stuck to the radiator. Needless to say, I got a bunch of third degree and second degree heat blisters up and down my tricep. So that puts me out even longer. I fight that, the, the blisters are getting better, I'm getting stronger like Rocky. I make an appearance, I head to Jackhammer Promotions at Mulcahy's in Wanton, by the way. A great show by Bobby Campbell and everybody there. First class organization. Hope to be working with them very shortly on some things I have in mind. But when I get there, I have problems with my vision. Now, sometimes I need reading glasses because let's just say I'm old. But I can't see anything. And I don't know how I managed to drive from Canarsie to Mulcahy's, and I was talking to Chris. By the way, speaking of Chris, check out EffectiveAggression.com. Really great clothing line, really great souvenirs, a bunch of signed gloves. And he's like, you know, Cyclone, you don't look too good. And I wasn't. So immediately the next day, I go to my eye doctor, 
And yours truly has now developed massive cataracts. So now I can't not only see up close, now I can't see far away. So slowly and surely, piece by piece, I'm falling apart. But what I did this morning, I put a bunch of duct tape all over myself in this beautiful 60 degree day in February. And it came out because I miss all of you. So that being said, I want to beg and plead with all of you, click share. Because now, now that I'm back, we got to show everybody just how much you guys love me. Um, as I just want to do this really fast. Unprofessional, I don't care. Um, so click share. Check out CycloneComedy.com. Check out Psyche Prods on Facebook. And of course, obviously, EffectiveAggression.com. Uh, now, when we come back, we're going to start this whole shingding up right after this. This is Frank Edgar. This is the Barbarian, Tim Bosch. I'm World Series of Fighting undefeated lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje. Yeah. MMA legend, UFC Hall of Famer, Ice Man. Chuck it up. If you got the guts, step in the cage with Cyclone. that kick now watch boom right behind the ear textbook round kick wow um i don't know what happened you know what i was pulling the clip off line and there was some crazy things but anyways what that clip was was because obviously we all know can't UFC, use UFC clips because the UFC puts the kibosh on anybody who uses their clips. But anyways, that was from LFA 59. There were a whole bunch of great finishes, and that one was a great spinning back kick followed by a massive head kick from Kyle Phillips on Amika Afinkadu. Just talk about me face planting in bed. Amika <sighs> face planted straight down on the mat. Just here's what you guys should do check out LFA 59, the results, and you'll see it. Uh, this weekend, bare knuckle fighting championships four, and look. People have been giving the bare knuckle fighting championships a whole bunch of heat. It's an, a brand spanking new organization that, that's changing the way the game is played a little bit. Their own rule set, it's, it is a perfect mixture of boxing and MMA. I mean, they have... Truly the squared circle, you know, where the UFC has the patent on the octagon. Nobody can use an octagon. That's why Bellator has a different shape. Uh, the PFL has a different shape cage. 
everyone has different shaped cages because the UFC owns the octagon. Yes, they own that shape. Bare Knuckles ring is is a ring. It's it's a circular ring with ropes and, and they get a lot of slack for no good reason right now. And, and here's the deal. This weekend they were in Cancun. Beautiful Cancun. They actually had it where it was uh, the U.S. against Mexico and it was in a baseball field. Now look, the seat arrangement didn't look that good. The first couple of fights were on their Facebook live stream. Then they went to pay-per-view. Yes, pay-per-view. Only 30 bucks. I I can't I got to admit, I can't imagine the numbers being that great. But as a fledgling organization, that's what you you expect to get beat up early on before before you were and your name gets out there. That being said, it's not that bad. If you like combat sports, you're going to like it. A friend of mine loves everything racing, and he doesn't care if it's two lawnmowers going down a lawn, cutting grass, he'll watch it. So if you like combat sports, there's no reason not to get into it. It's just one other thing you can watch. And look, 30 bucks is a lot cheaper than the UFC pay-per-view model. Um, but another thing out of uh, Bare Knuckle, they just announced Anthony Rumble Johnson is now one of their brand ambassadors. Now, do I think Rumble is going to unretire and step in the ring and start throwing hands bare knuckle I don't know but he's jacked he's huge I'm not saying he's on the juice I, I I don't know but Rumble Johnson is is the kind of perfect person they can use as a brand ambassador Beck Rollings uh Defended and continued to remain undefeated in a bare knuckle competition as she is still the queen of bare knuckle fighting. And by the way, they not only gave, you know, she didn't only defend her title, but the Mexican she beat had a belt. So now she walks away with two belts. And look, Beck Rowling's had problems in the UFC get, getting a title shot, let alone winning a belt. Now she has two. So, look, not every fish is in the right pond at first. This is the perfect spot for her. Uh, and how we not talk about Fight Night Brazil last night? Saturday night, not last night. Days are getting mixed up. Johnny Walker, all the hype around him. But here's the thing, folks. Johnny Walker is only 2 and oh, Yes, an incredible spinning back fist finish. 15 seconds. All the hype in the world. But Johnny Walker, 2-0. and oh. He's already also calling out ranked competition. I'm sorry, you're 2-0. and oh. You're not getting a ranked opponent. You're not. No, 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 no. Not going to happen, Johnny. Maybe after a couple more wins, no problem. Right now, uh-uh. Marlon Marias, local Jersey boy, obviously now has to be the number one contender. And I don't want to hear this this stupid super fight talk anymore between Henry Cejudo and TJ Dillashaw. I don't care about flyweight or abandonweight. 
Each one now has a backlog of opponents. Marlon has to get that shot at TJ. Has to. He's proven beyond a reasonable doubt. He's proven his worth. He's proven that he is the number one contender. Hey, Mr. Fiance Brian. And I shall be seeing you on Saturday. Um, here's the thing. Marlon has proven. And quite frankly, as good as T.J. Dillashaw is, T.J., I'm not saying where he is on my pound-for-pound pound list just yet. Maybe later in the show you'll have to just keep on watching. But the fact of the matter is, he's up there. Remember, he, he trains with, with some of the best fighters in the game. But Marlon is... Marlon is now the complete package he was in World Series of Fighting. He has his feet under. He, he's, he's in that sweet spot groove. And he needs to fight for that title. Give him the title shot. He deserves it. As far as Henry Cejudo and the Bantamweights are concerned, Joseph Benavides deserves that title shot. Just give it to him. Uh, there was a lot of hinting of retirement and of all things by all Brazilians. Here's the list if you don't know. Damian Maia after beating Lyman Good hinted 2019 might be it for him. Look, Damian Maia with the exception of against Tyron Woodley doesn't take a beating. He could go another two, three more years. At, at minimum, two, three more years. Being he doesn't take the shots. Wants to call it in 2019, that's on him. Jose Aldo. Now look, Jose has... Other people have said it, and now I say it. This is the WEC version of Jose Aldo right now. And the fact of the matter is, Jose Aldo is, and it's odd to hear myself say this, he's on the verge, on the border, of being worthy for another shot himself. And that's so crazy, because the featherweights is, look, if Max is going to remain a featherweight, Frankie Edgar deserves that shot more than anybody right now. Max has beaten Jose twice, and he just destroyed Brian Ortega. Frankie deserves that shot. Jose? He, he, he's hinted on retirement as well. He's hinted about maybe going up to lightweight also. Jose Aldo runs a burger restaurant in Brazil. So he doesn't need to fight. He has money coming in. I'd like to see that Conor rematch at lightweight. That would be interesting. Does Jose Aldo's speed and power that he's now somehow managed to recoup does it transfer up a division? Who knows? But it's worth it to see that. Tiago, Tiago, and I know Brian is laughing. It's Tiago, 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 Alves, Alves. He's hinted on retirement as well. Now look, he, if you want to say he, he, he stole a victory from Max Griffin, fine. You want to say if it was anywhere other than Brazil, he doesn't win? Fine. Max outstruck him. Max pounded him like, like I'm going to pound the steaks that are now defrosting in my kitchen. There is there's no way 
that Max didn't win that fight. He, you, you have to understand something. In Brazil, in Russia, in Canada, in the U.S., in Mexico, judges can be sometimes funky. In Brazil, I I don't know what it is, but they... They're kind of like the Vegas judges for Floyd. You know what I'm saying? You know? But anyways, Tiago, 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 Tiago is also one of the strength and conditioning coaches and one of the boxing coaches for ATT and Coconut Creek. So he has a backup plan to fall on. He's hinted at retirement. And at this point in his career, he's gotten beaten up enough. It's worth it for him to call it a career. And then the crescendo of them all. The one person not on the card, the one Brazilian not on the card, the one Brazilian not fighting in Brazil this time, announced that she, too, is contemplating retirement. And that's Amanda Nunes, the champ champ. Now look, I don't know what they're going to do with the female featherweight division. I I wish to God they, they would have, they would just scour and sign true 145ers. I don't know why they don't. They have double the cards from now on being on ESPN. They're going to need more divisions. Might as well keep it. Same thing with the flyweight division. I don't know. I just don't know why they don't do that. But Amanda hinted that she is talking about fighting Holly. And here's the thing. If she beats Holly home, which... First of all, Holly doesn't deserve to fight Amanda. But... If the fight happens, she would have beaten Rhonda, Misha, Cyborg, and Holly, and two wins against Valentina Shevchenko. She has to be the female goat then. If, if, it, if she isn't looked at now as the female goat, after that list, you, you have to. Plain and simple. Female goat, Amanda Nunes. Um, but she also has something else to fall back on. She is the uh, matchmaker for Invicta FC. Nina... Her girlfriend slash, what I'm not sure if they're married yet or not, is climbing the rankings right now as well. Wants to give Nina some of the spotlight. Raise family. I think it's I, It's better to go out, I think. Sort of like a Barry Sanders sort, sort of where you still technically have more in the tank, but you have all your, your, your head still in the game. You know what I'm saying? Uh, speaking of heads in the game, Sergey Kovalev regained his WBO welterweight championship, beating out... Uh, Elider Alvarez. This time he beat him by unanimous decision. The first time they fought, Alvarez KO'd him, and and Sergey said he's going to work on his uh, cardio. 
He's going to work on his speed, going to work on his power. And Sergey came back and just murked Alvarez. He outstruck him. Check this out. 816 strikes landed to 369. That is a beating upon beatings. Now, if you guys don't click share, I'm going to beat you just as much. Don't make me do that. So just please click share. Brian, you're watching, click share. Rudy, you too. Click share. It's not that hard. You guys are smart people. Simple button. Just hit share. Um, check out effectiveaggression.com. And you know what? When we come back, we'll talk some more topics right after this. Hi, I'm Jim Miller. This is Dan Mergliata. I'm Derek Brunson. I'm Nick the Carney Lentz, and you're locked into the cage with Cyclone. Jim Miller. Now, since I was away for so long, let's just talk about something that, that happened a while back. And, and some people, some of you out there are still complaining about it. The new UFC belt. Guys, if you say it looks like a Toys R Us toy belt. If you think it looks like a, a cheap knockoff WWE version of a belt, you don't understand what it actually means, what it actually looks like. Look, what was the last UFC belt basically? Just a gold buckle, UFC on it, two side plates, and that's it. This one's a lot more intricate if you really, really take a look at it. Every time a champion defends his belt successfully, a red ruby goes on. This one has the flags of the champion on the belt. Yes, I get it. The, the main plate looks... Toy-ish. But this belt is so much better. That there is... There, there is... So, so much more. Frankie Love. Look, Frankie, you know about toy belts. Oh. I'm sure you agree with me. Trust me. This new UFC belt is not toy-ish. All right. Um, th the only difference, if I had to, to nitpick, if I had to say something needs to be changed in the belt, what I would do is I would pay homage to the classic boxing titles. I would put the side plates being like the first and the second champion of whatever division that belt is. That's what I would do. It would give it a little bit more of a classic look. But 
Thank you for agreeing with me, Frankie. See, you know. If you people don't want to listen to me, listen to Frankie Love, because Frankie Love is the man. Plus, he's one hell of a cook, too. And one hell of a bartender, if if I remember correctly. Um, that's just a little bit of an inside joke, as we say in the business. But that belt is fine. Like I said, it, the only thing I would do is maybe put the, the first champion on either side of the main plate. I would do that. Otherwise, there is nothing wrong with that title. Stop saying it looks like a toy. Um, as far as the Connor, Khabib, John Jones stuff with, with everything that went down in Vegas, look, the Las Vegas, it's not even Las Vegas, it's the Nevada State Athletic Commission. These guys, and I talked to Tom Sconzo from the New York State Athletic Commission. The, the fact of the matter is, these athletic commissions have no oversight. There is nobody over them. Most, I think the California State Athletic Commission can only find like 20,000, and, and that's for a massive, massive breakage of rules. The, the, the Nevada State Athletic Commission, is, it's like the Wild West out there. There's no oversight. So here's the thing. They could have totally screwed the UFC. And, and for any UFC fan out there not to realize that, look, they could have told all three, Kana Khabib and John Jones, guess what? See, you don't want to be you. You're all gone. But they didn't. So, <sighs> the UFC, in a way, caught a massive break because of that. Okay? Connor, I think, got what he deserved. John, look, <sighs> I don't even know... What, pulsating picograms and it's confusing as to hell to me too so I have no clue and as far as Khabib is concerned Khabib could have gotten a lot longer and should have gotten a lot longer for suspension to take as much money as they did I think is wrong but the suspension should have been longer and that is what I have to say about that so, guys, guess what? Right after me, you guys are going to keep it right here on Strong Island Television. Because after me, pinups, cool cats, and comics is right here. And you guys should share and watch them too. Guys, click share. I say this all the time. Click share. Um, and I say once again, effectiveaggression.com. And when we come back, lots of segments right after this. I'm Dennis Bermudez. Hi, I'm a creepy Ian McCall. Yo, I'm Kelvin Gastelum. This is Mark Gumbel. Yo, I'm the world's most dangerous man. Hall of Famer Ken Shamrock. And you're getting tapped out in the cage with Psycho.
Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. And I'm back. And guess what? Today in MMA history, UFC 57, the trilogy, Chuck Liddell, KOing, Randy Couture. Talk about trilogies. That is hands down, one of the best trilogies in MMA history, not just UFC history. Doesn't get better than that. Also on that card, little old Joe Riggs takes out Nick Diaz by unanimous decision. Ooh. Like refried beans right there. I don't know. Um, Then... UFC 143 today as well. Um, Nick Condit taking out the aforementioned Nick Diaz as well by unanimous decision for the interim welterweight championship. And, I mean, if you remember that fight, Carlos, that was a bloody freaking war where it's that that has to be one of the classics ever in UFC history also on that card Dustin Poirier submitting Max Holloway by uh, arm triangle that's what happened on this day in MMA history but that's not all that happened because we got three birthdays today. Andre Olarovsky turns 42 years old today. Shamil Magomedov hits the young age of 27. And let me tell you something. If you don't know Shamil Magomedov, guys, check out his Sure Dog page. The kid, just like every... If you're Russian, you know Sambo wrestling and and you are like unbeatable. That's what Shamil is. And Igor Gracie turns 40 years old today. Igor's only 40? Wow. I would have thought Igor Gracie's a lot older. I haven't seen him recently. Then again, I haven't been in the city recently either might help because we know Igor ain't walking around my neighborhood anyways let's talk since we haven't done this in a while it's the new ESPN generation in the UFC let's talk some pound for pound guys okay so I'm not doing a top 15. I, I, first of all, if you check out the UFC's rankings on their site, the new UFC site sucks. It sucks. It's no good. They, everyone that redoes their websites make them suck. Just leave well enough alone. Anyways, I'm only going to do a top 12 because... I like a dozen. I kind of like more than a dozen, but for pound for pound list, I think a dozen is fine enough. Number 12 for me is the Grim Reaper himself putting his title on the line this Saturday. Bobby Knuckles, Robert Whittaker. Number 11, as far as I'm concerned, is Henry Sohuda. I think he's dangerous. I think he's a complete fighter, but I think there's 10 better than him. And in number 10 is Chris Cyborg. Look, yeah, she's fallen from my number two spot, but the fact of the matter is Chris Cyborg is still a beast. Number nine, I, I can't believe I'm going to put him at number nine because, see, this shows you how great I am. I can take personal feelings out of it. Tyron Woodley. 
and, and, and I got him in. I hoped he would get smoked by Kamara Usman. But T. Wood slides in nicely at number nine. And number eight is the person who I will be spending this Saturday night with. Valentina Shevchenko. The flyweight female champion is at number eight. And number seven, TJ Killershaw, Dillashaw, Pillershaw. Yeah, look, here's the deal. I think TJ, honestly, is number one, On, to be honest. He is so complete. He is, he's like a freak mentally. You know, he, he is everything you want in a fighter. Is what TJ Dillashaw is. But he's at number seven. At number six, the bigger version of TJ Dillashaw, Tony Ferguson, who has the evil little Yoda, Eddie Bravo, whispering in his ear. And honestly, nobody deserves a title shot, to be honest, more than Tony Ferguson. El Kukui deserves a title shot. Of course, it's not going to happen with Khabib sitting out on suspension. And then he wants to sit out longer because his teammates got suspended. And so Tony's going to be sit, not getting a title shot for at least 11 months. Anyways, moving along on the pound for pound list. Number five, Stipe Miocic. The baddest man on the planet. Number four, the female goat, Amanda Nunes. As far as I'm concerned, even though he's sitting out, he, he's. I disagree with his politics. I disagree with the way he, he thinks. Khabib, as far as I'm concerned, is number three on the pound for pound list. Number two, the blessed era, Max Holloway. He is continuing to prove how complete of a fighter he is. Now, if he goes up to lightweight, those guys that kill us up there, I don't know how he would handle it. I would like to see him and Jose Aldo, though, eventually move up. And still sitting at number one on the pound for pound list, DC Daniel Cormier. The man just doesn't. He, he doesn't move. He sits there. Now, if you listen very carefully to that list, you don't hear GSP's name. You don't hear Connor's name. And you don't hear John Jones's name. As far as I'm concerned, I will never, ever, ever put someone that Pops for steroids, or PEDs, or pictograms, picograms, or anything else. You pop, you're not on my list as far as I'm concerned. It's that simple. My list is the clean pound for pound list. And all 12 of these names are all clean. Not one of them. Uh, yeah, not one of them has ever popped for anything. Now, you know what time it is? Raffle time! Okie dokie, guys. So here's what we're going to do this week. Because I've been out of action, what I'm going to do is, like always, answer two questions. But this time, I'm not flipping a coin to make a winner. The two people who get picked both win automatically. Two prizes, because I am just that damn nice of a guy. All right. The automatic first winner is Marty Huggins. You are an automatic winner. Your question. 
What rematch does the UFC need more? TJ Dillashaw against Henry Cejudo or Cyborg against Amanda Nunes? Look, I don't want to see TJ and Henry right now. Like I said before, I say again. Both guys have people in their own divisions that deserve title shots. TJ has Marlon Marais and Henry Cejudo has Joseph Benavides. After that, if they want to re- rematch it, fine. Amanda and Cyborg, yeah. I'd like to see that rematch, but I'll tell you a rematch I want to see even more. Stipe against DC. I want, and it's starting to look like DC is going to fall off of that mandatory retirement date. I want to see DC and Stipe. I know why DC... We all know, as far as that's concerned, why DC wants Brock. Unless it's going to be DC and John Jones at heavyweight to Trilogy. As a matter of fact, I'd like to see that one too. But you know what, Marty? Between your two choices, I go Cyborg Amanda. Even though I'd rather see... DC Stipe and DC John as a trilogy. Anyways, congratulations, you win. And winner number two. Oh my goodness, congratulations, Brian Haran. You are automatic winner number two. And good, Chris, now I don't have to mail it. I'll just hand you your prize on Saturday when I see you with Valentina Shevchenko. Your question, do you think Sohudo did enough to save the flyweight division? I don't think going... Look... We all know, it's like a dirty little secret that everybody knows that they wanted to get rid of the division. But here's the thing, you got to understand, you have to, have to, have to get it through your heads. There is almost double the content the UFC is putting on ESPN. Where are they going to get those fights if there isn't an, a flyweight division or a female featherweight division and eventually a 165 division? Did he do enough to save it? I, I don't think it was up to him to save the division. I think they were going to need that division win, lose, or draw. So did he save it? I don't know. He damn well should, because here's the thing. They get rid of that division. They tank any other division. They're going to be in trouble because they're going to have cards. Since they like to put titles, defenses at the top of these cards, they're stuck. Now, you want to know who's not stuck? You, because I will be back next week. Unless, of course, I die sometime between the week. But I'm not planning on dying just yet. Anyways, like I said, I will be back next week. So, until next week, I am Cyclone saying, just because you are not an athlete, doesn't mean you can't be an athletic supporter. Bye-bye.